good morning students we will start chapter 3 nationalism in india of history class 10 contents are introduction topic 1 the first world war khilafat and non cooperation topic 1.1 the idea ideas of satyagraha topic 1.2 the royal attack topic 1.3 why non cooperation introduction as we have seen video lecture of chapter 1 nationalism in europe came to be associated with the formation of nation states it also meant a change in people's understanding of who they were and what defined their identity and sense of belonging in most countries the making of this new national identity was a long process how did this consciousness emerge in india in india as in vietnam and many other colonies the growth of modern nationalism is intimately connected to the anti colonial movement people began to discovering their unity in the process of their struggle with colonialism the sense of being oppressed under colonialism provided a shared bond that tied many different groups together The Congress under Mahatma Gandhi tried to force two groups Hindus and Muslims together within one movement but the unity did not emerge without conflict In this chapter we will study the non cooperation and civil disobedience movements we will study how the Congress sought to develop the national movement how different social groups participated in the movement and how nationalism captured the imagination of people the first world war first of all the war created a new economic and political situation it led to a huge increase in defense expenditure which was financed by war loans and increasing taxes custom duties were raised and income tax introduced through the war years prices increased doubling between 1913 to 1918 leading to extreme hardship for the common people villages were called upon to supply soldiers and the forced recruitment in rural areas caused widespread anger then in 1918 to 1921 crops failed in many parts of india resulting in acute shortage of food this was accompanied by an influenza epidemic According to the survey of 1921 13 million people died as a result of famine and the epidemic the idea of satyagraha mahatma gandhi returned to india in january 1915 he had come from south africa where he had successfully fought the resist resign with a novel method of mass agitation which he called satyagraha The idea of satyagraha emphasized the power of truth and the need to search for it. It suggested that if the cause was true, if the struggle was against injustice, then physical force was not necessary to fight the oppression. Without being aggressive, a satyagrahi could win the battle through non-violence. This could be done by appealing to the conscience of the oppressors. by this struggle truth was bound to ultimately triumph mahatma gandhi believed that this dharma of non violence could unite all indians after arriving in india mahatma gandhi successfully organized satyagraha movement in various places in 1916 he traveled to champaran in bihar to inspire the peasants to struggle against the oppressive plantation system Then in 1917 he organized a satyagraha to support the peasants of Kheda district of Gujarat affected by crop failure and a plague epidemic the peasants of Kheda could not pay the revenue and were demanding that revenue collection of be relaxed in 1918 mahatma gandhi went to ahmedabad to organize a satyagraha movement amongst the cotton mill workers the roller attack emboldened 
with this success, Gandhi de decided to launch a nationwide satyagraha against the proposed Rolat Act in 1919. This act had been hurriedly passed through the Imperial Legislative Council. Despite the united opposition of the Indian members, it gave the government enormous powers to repress political activities and allowed detention of political prisoners without trial for two years. Mahatma Gandhi wanted non-violent civil disobedience against such unjust laws, which would start with a hatal on 6th April. Rallies were organized at various places, various cities. Workers went on strikes in railway workshops and shops closed down. Alarmed by the popular upsurge and scared that lines of communication such as the railway and telegraph would be disrupted, the British administration decided to clamp down nationalists. Local leaders were picked up from Amritsar and Mahatma Gandhi was buried to enter Delhi. On 10th April, the police in Amritsar fired upon a peaceful procession provoking widespread attack on banks, post offices, and railway stations. Martial law was imposed and General Dyer took command. Jallianwala Incident On 13th April, the infamous Jallianwala Incident took place. On that day, a large crowd gathered in the enclosed ground of Jallianwala Bagh. Some came to protest against the government's new repressive measures. Others had come to attend the annual Baisakhi fair being from outside the city. Many villagers were unaware of the martial law that had been imposed. Dyer entered the area, blocked the exist points, opened fire on the crowd, killing hundreds of people. His main aim was to produce a moral effort, effect to create in the minds of satyagrahis a feeling of terror and awe. There were strikes, clashes with the police and attack on government buildings. The government responded with brutal repression, seeking to humiliate and terrorize people. Satyagrahis were forced to rub their nose on the ground, crawl on the street, and do salute to all sahibs. People were flogged and were bombed. Seeing violence spread, Mahatma Gandhi called off the movement. Khilafat movement. Mahatma Gandhi now felt the need to launch a more broad-based movement in India, but he was certain that no such movement could be organized without bringing the Hindus and Muslims closer together. One way of doing this, he felt, was to take up the Khilafat issue. The First World War had ended with the defeat of Ottoman Turkey. And there were rumors that a harsh peace treaty was going to be imposed on the Ottoman Emperor, the spiritual head of the Islamic world, the Khalifa. A Khilafat committee was formed a in Bombay in March 1919. A young generation of Muslim leaders like the Ali brothers, Muhammad Ali and Sokat Ali began to discuss him with Mahatma Gandhi about the possibility of a united mass action on the issue. Gandhiji saw this as an opportunity to bring Muslims under the umbrella of unified national movement. Why non-cooperation? Hind Swaraj, written by Mahatma Gandhi, declared that British rule was established in India with the cooperation of Indians. If Indians refused to cooperate, British rule in India would collapse within a year and Swaraj would come. How could non-cooperation become a movement? Gandhiji proposed that the movement should unfold in stages. It should begin, it should begin with the surrender of titles that the government awarded and a boycott of civil services, army, police, courts and legislative councils, schools and foreign goods. 
Then in case the government used repression, a full civil disobedience campaign would be launched. Through the summer of 1920, Mahatma Gandhi and Sokat Ali toured extensively, mobilizing popular support for the movement. Many within the Congress were, however, concerned about the proposals. They were reluctant to boycott the council elections scheduled for November 1920, and they feared that the movement might lead to popular violence. There was an intense tussle within the Congress. For a while, there seemed no meeting point between the supporters and the opponents of the movement. Finally, at the Congress session at Nagpur in December 1920, a compromise was worked out and the non-cooperation program was adopted. Thank you.